Ubuntu 25.10 is switching to a Rust based sudo. The new Cosmic Desktop Alpha version is out. We have a very alarming removal of the Deepen Desktop of the OpenSUSE packaging. We have also some security notices about Apache OpenOffice. Um, also Fedora gets a WSL version and is removing the X11 packages. My name is Jean from Linux Art and uh, let us come to the first news here and we see Ubuntu 25.10 is now switching to a Rust based sudo. If you don't know sudo it is the command to become administrator on your Linux system and I would say it is one of the most essential Linux commands we have out there and now Ubuntu will switch to sudo dash rs. Very, very cool. But why are they switching to the new Rust version? Very easy to say. A sudo is very, very old and has a massive code base, over 30,000 lines of code. That's very, very huge just for a small program um, to give you just the administrator rights. And because of this, the security analysis of sudo is very, very hard. And in the last years, um, sudo had almost frequently a new security issues. Some of them were very urgent, some of them weren't too hard, but it's very hard uh, to maintain such an old code base, which is very, very huge, which has also many functionalities we don't use anymore in any way. So sometimes it's better to get a new fresh start. And that is also a canonical saying, and um, they will switch to sudo dash rs in Ubuntu 25.10. What are you thinking about? My personal opinion is that this is completely okay. And I would also say this is a good step for of Canonical because they have a big influence in the Linux area. And maybe because of that also other distributions will change to this, at least all Ubuntu derivatives. Because in the end, I guess, we only have big advantages instead of disadvantages because yeah, it's more modern code base. We have improved error handling. Uh, with better error messaging. We have a focus on long-term maintenance and future improvements uh, because this um, sudo-rs code base uh, appears to be very, very good. And we have, of course, better security. Thanks at first place to the memory safe language because Rust is memory safe, but also we have a way smaller code base. But when it comes to functionality, we also see that a sudo RS is not expected to bring over all the features of sudo, but um, all the important ones and all we uh, are using are planned or are already implemented. This is great. And uh, Ubuntu will not actually replace sudo for now, but they will escalate their privilege handling to sudo RS now um, instead of sudo. So sudo RS will be parallel installed in the Ubuntu 25.10 version, but I would expect that in a few further versions, sudo RS becomes the default and will replace completely sudo. I guess they will do that if sudo turns out to be very stable and very major as I would expect it at this stage. Yeah, this is it to the Ubuntu sudo rs news. Very, very cool in my opinion. And also they are replacing some other existing components. Uh, for example, core utils, find utils or diff utils. They want to oxidize Ubuntu yeah, because of the rust. Very excited how this will turn out in the end. In the next news, we have our Cosmic Alpha 7 desktop, which should be the last alpha a version of this desktop because it will become beta now. And uh, yeah, we have very, very cool and uh, new features. Uh, for example, the workspaces feature we see here, we can now rearrange some workspaces, we can also pin them. Also, we have some new accessibility features like high contrast mode, color filters, and also something like color inversion. Very, very helpful. Also, the magnifier is inside. This is very, very important, I guess. We also see here the improvements to the magnifier. Very, very good. Also, we have some tooltips now. Here we see them. 
it's when you hover with your mouse over an icon and stand still for a moment, then you will see this corresponding text to the application you are focusing with your mouse pointer. We also have some better global shortcut handling, also in a compatibility layer with X11 applications, very, very good. I'm asking myself, why do they even do that? If Fedora will yeah, kind of completely ditch now the X11 packages in their default environment. And I would also say the big change is going to Wayland, but yeah, we're, there are also still some applications out there which are only coming with X11 support. We also now have some better scaling optimizations also for X Wayland, which is the compatibility layer. And also we have some shortcut changes inside. Also now a seek ahead search in our cosmic file manager. So if you type in a path um, in your path line, then this will be completed automatically. Very, very cool. And also some balance scaling now with left and right. This wasn't there until now. Um, also very cool. But honestly, who of you does really use this output balancer here? Um, honestly, I never used it. Just write it me to the comments if you were using it. Um, and also we have a lot of bug fixes. Yeah, because this is a complete new desktop. They want to build Rome by night or by one release cycle of Ubuntu. Ubuntu and we see this doesn't turn out very, very good because Pop OS 24.4 is still not around. And I would also expect that they ditch the Pop OS 24.4 version and go straight to the Pop OS 26.4 version. I guess this will happen to be honest. And because now to release a Pop OS 24.4 version one year later, end of the alpha stadium here of this cosmic desktop, honestly, I don't think think anymore that there will be a Pop OS 24.4 version released. But yeah, let's see what the future brings. But also uh, for some package base, the future is over now on OpenSUSE at least. And this is the Deepin desktop. Yeah, the Deepin desktop is a very, very nice looking desktop environment. Doesn't it look good? Very, very cool. They also have their own core apps for the desktop, also an own file manager and so on. They have put a lot of work in it. But now the uh, Deepin desktop is now removed from the OpenSUSE packages due to packaging policy violation. So why is that? Yeah, they bypassed the OpenSUSE packaging policy via a license agreement dialog. This was because the Deepin desktop environment relies on many Polkit and Dbus policies and rights. They have to be given, but a part of the package restrictions of OpenSUSE is that they have to review these Dbus and Polkit views. So they have been reviewing them uh, since 2018. I guess very, very long time. And apparently the open user security team wasn't too fast for at least for the maintainer because he introduced in 2021, I guess it was um, a deep and feature enable package which comes with a license agreement, which says if you want to use a deep and desktop properly, then you have to accept all Dbus rules and all Polkit rules, which are handling the permission system of Linux. And they weren't reviewed by the open CUSA. Um, security team. But what are these rules? And the security team of OpenSUSE says that it is a security nightmare with the Deepin desktop. Not very good, at least with the Deepin file manager, for example. So in the end, because this package was against the package policies of OpenSUSE, they now removed the Deepin desktop from their package base completely. Yeah, very, very sad for all Deepin users under OpenSUSE. But if you want to continue uh, using the uh, Deepin desktop, I guess there will be a, a repository where you can uh, download it. But also there are, of course, some distributions out there. For example, the uh, Deepin Linux distribution, which comes from China. So they also have a complete uh, Chinese page here. So it doesn't have a big impact in our Western world for now, I would say. 
But yeah, very, very cool desktop, but also with very broad security issues, at least what the OpenSUSE security team is saying about. This is it to the Deepin desktop and we come to another yeah, security issue. And this is the war between LibreOffice and OpenOffice. So I would say all of you are familiar with LibreOffice. This is the kind of successor of Open's Office, but they forked in 2012 or 2013, so more than 10 years ago. But the Open Office project still has a very small user base, but they um, have them. And um, there are still around some websites which are recommending Open Office because they don't know that there's a new kind of better project. And uh, yeah, the question is why is LibreOffice better than Open Office? And uh, if we have a look to the Wikipedia article here, we we see at first um, some security issues because the Apache Foundation reported further problems with Open Office. Uh, just to know, uh, the Apache Software Foundation is the maintainer of Open Office or holds the Open Office trademark and um, this security health status is amber. So this is very alarming in my opinion. There are three issues over one year old and also some other open issues which are not fully triaged. So this doesn't look good for such a big office suit here and they were still not fixed in um, May 2025. This isn't good. And also, if we have a look to the Apache Open Office version, versioning or release history, we see the uh, first Apache release in 2012 because um, before it wasn't uh, backed by Apache, but we see there isn't a lot happening. The um, major version is kind of the 4 version or 4.1 version we see here. From now on, there are only bug fixes, bug fixes, bug fixes, bug fixes, bug fixes, four bug fixes, nice two bug fixes, seven security bug fixes, so they are doing some bug fixes, but the uh, functionality doesn't evolve since 2013 or 2014. So yeah, this is very bad. And LibreOffice is evolving, bringing a lot of new features in there. So if you want to use OpenOffice, I would recommend you using LibreOffice because of that. But yeah, there are still some people out there which are using OpenOffice. This has also some licensing issues. So if you are still using OpenOffice and you don't want to use LibreOffice, just write it me into the comments why you don't want it. I would be very curious about that. Now let us come to Fedora because it is now an official WSL distribution inside Microsoft Windows. So you can easily run Fedora out of um, Windows. Very, very cool in my opinion. And there are now many distributions supported via WSL. These are the supported distributions. It is Ubuntu, Debian, OpenSUSE and SUSE Enterprise Linux. Also Kali Linux, Fedora Remix for WSL, but now Fedora is um, officially inside um, Penguin, Penguin Enterprise, Oracle Linux and Alma Linux OS. That are many distributions. And I would say the most popular one is, I guess, Ubuntu. And also Debian, I guess, is very, very strong. There. And I would say Fedora is also a great completion for this uh, WSL suite of Linux distributions. And also I'm planning doing maybe some WSL content here on the Linux channel. Not too much, but um, some introducing uh, videos, I guess, would be very, very cool because this is also a very huge uh, potential user base. And honestly, if they are using Linux, also let it be inside Windows they are still using Linux. And this is a great step forward, I would say, and maybe a mid step uh, before switching completely to Linux, maybe. But if you stay on Windows and just use Linux over WSL, I guess this is also completely okay and makes L Linux even stronger. And so in my opinion, this WSL project is a, a great step um, for the Linux distributions. Also, of course, Microsoft profits from it, but I would say this is fine there. This is it to Fedora 42. Um, in Fedora 43, they are um, now removing the GNOME X11 packages. So I would say Fedora now really becomes X11 only. This also happened with the Fedora KDE edition because the new KDE Plasma 6 desktop is a uh, well and only uh, on Fedora and I would say on every distribution. I don't know if there's any 
distribution with KDE Plasma 6, which is using X11 by default. Just write them into the comments. And yeah, now they are also removing the X11 packages in uh, Fedora. So all users who still use uh, GNOME X11 under Fedora 42 will be migrated with Fedora 43 to the GNOME Valiant session. And what are the users saying? The users are saying this is completely fine. If we see the poll here, 80% uh, are saying, yeah, this is also good. And in the end, 90% are saying, yeah, this is completely fine. Or this is the right way a Fedora should take. And I would also so consider myself in the strongly in favor uh, position because yeah, which other distribution should ditch out X11 completely if it wasn't Fedora? Honestly, I don't know. Um, maybe Canonical <laughs> with Ubuntu, but I would say this is a good step forward. So with this, uh, the first distribution becomes kind of completely Wayland only. Um, this also is a lot of pressure for all um, Linux app developers to get their apps running properly with the Wayland protocol, even though it's not too easy for some app developers. For example, also um, I'm developing the Linux Assistant. It's a daily helper. We also have a Wayland version, of course, or it also can work with a Wayland, but it doesn't work as good in Wayland compared to the X11 base. So I also will have to do some work to get the Wayland support um, better working here on the Linux Assistant base. But sometimes this isn't too easy because um, if we have a look, for example, to KeePass XE, we have an open issue since 2018. And some of the guys uh, says, yeah, that cannot work on Wayland due to security restrictions for which we haven't found a solution yet. It was um, a poster in 2018, but now they are getting into it. For example, on the um, 3rd of March, they have a new pull request for the auto type implementation via the X11 portal, um, but this is only a draft yet. So this isn't merged yet. So you see there are big applications which are struggling with some integrations with the Wayland base. And I would say for some of us, this could be kind of a hard change if we still use X11 and now want to use Wayland because there isn't everything working as we are used to in X11. So I hope they will uh, get fixed these soon. And I also hope that I myself get fixed the Linux Assistant with a better Wayland support, supporting more functionality. But um, also now you could already use the Linux Assistant with your Wayland session. So so yeah, this is it to this video. Just a small notice in the end. Um, we now offer a Linux support on linuxort.com. So if you have some trouble with the Linux desktop, for example, with drivers, printers, also server administration, Nextcloud, Ubuntu server, Debian server, Docker issues, and so on. And just have a look to our new website. And um, this is it for now, I would say. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel because here we are releasing at the current time twice a week new videos about Linux and open source. So I would say see you next time. Bye bye.